Hello and welcome to a special edition of Frost Over the World from New York City as the nations of the world come here for the UN General Assembly meetings. Later on we'll be meeting actually a queen of New York City, Sarah Jessica Parker. But right now we're at the UN. Right now we're at the UN and we're about to cover the subject, the hot subject of the week, which is of course Israel and Palestine. And with that in mind, we're going to talk to someone who is the Prime Minister of a small Middle Eastern country, a big player in world affairs, Sheikh Hamad bin Jassim. He's the Prime Minister of Qatar, but he's also the Foreign Minister of Qatar. Your Excellency, thank you. Thank you very much for being with us. People's minds, this week in particular, are very much on Palestine and their bid for statehood at the UN. Has there been any progress at all on this? The Emir implied uh, in his speech uh, that there hadn't, that there hadn't really been any progress. Uh, do you think there's been any change? Well, I think uh, the Emir uh, in his speech, uh, he was reflecting, uh, you know, facts, that there is nothing being done to prove to the Palestinian that there is some progress or there is light in the tunnel, in the end of the tunnel. Uh, I, 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 uh, hear, I was hearing the piece from the 90s, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. I work in it, not I hear it. And we always have hope and up and down with every administration in the United States. And uh, I believe uh, the United States and the Quartet, they know what they have to do. The Israelis know what they have to do. The Palestinians know what they have to do. But up till now, there is no will to sit together and to find a way out of this problem. We know that the border of 67, it has to be the focal. We know that there is some swaps have to be done. What percentage of swaps? That's what being discussed. Somebody say 2%, somebody say 4%, 5%. I believe uh, that there is uh, this issue, it's uh, overheated in the Middle East and with what going in the Middle East now in the Arab Spring, we call, uh, as they call it, uh, that the people is frustrated. And I believe for the peace and for the stability, not only for the region, for the world, we have to find a way out. There is a lot of discussion happened last few days here and we participated in all of them. Uh, and we saw the declaration of the quartet, but in my opinion, somebody have to bring everybody, let them sit in a room, week, two weeks, three weeks, because everybody know what is the solution. But everybody was think, is thinking about the poll for himself, the politicians. Everybody think how much he can bargain. I think we, it's not the time to bargain, it's the time to give the legitimacy of what being said in the United Nations and the Security Council before. We need leaders on both sides to take decision, mainly in Israel, because Israel, they, they say they want peace, but they want peace according to their own specification. That cannot be done. The peace, it has to be an international specification done by the Security Council. And I believe Tomorrow, today we have four, at four o'clock meeting with the Arab League to discuss this uh, issue mainly. And tomorrow there will be big, um, you know, the decision, let me say. It's not a big decision for me anymore because I, we've been through this process for many years and I know we have up, you know, we raise the hope a little bit, we bring the hope down a little bit, you know, that's something happening over years. So really, you've concluded that Israel needs to move more, make more of a compromise. It's not compromise. I don't ask the Israeli to compromise. The Israeli have the right to live in peace in the region. The Israeli have the right uh, to have a normal uh, neighborhood. But the neighborhood is changing now, no more neighborhood which you can talk with the leaders. You have to know the people. Egypt changing, all the surrounding of Israel is changing. So no more 
no more the protection or the way which it happens for many years could continue. The Israel, the normal Israeli and the normal uh, politician have to know that he have to think, okay, there is an international arena. If I want to normalize with these people, I have, I don't want them to sacrifice. I want them just to give the right for the Palestinian to live side by side with them according to the United Nations Security Resolution. And also the Israeli have the right to, to know about their security. They have to discuss this with all the Arabs. And in the Arab initiative, security is part of the discussion, you know, and normalization is part of the discussion with the Israelis. So there's a case then for uh, getting the parties together, maybe for two or three weeks. I believe we have to bring everybody together and if there is a solution accepted by both sides, it has to be ratified by the Arabs and this is part of the security which the Israeli ask and it has to be ratified by United Nations and everybody, they have to defend that solution. But the solution should be fair. You know, you cannot discuss a solution while the Israelis build uh, new houses, you know. If you want to discuss the settlement, the settlements, yeah. you have to discuss this with a good faith from both sides. Do you think that it's conceivable that there could be a solution within the next 12 months or even less? Do you I'm, think? I'm not optimistic, frankly speaking. I want to, this is my first time to say this. Uh, we, we will do what we can do uh, to help. But if this is the environment, I am not optimistic. I am worried that what we are seeing now, the movement and try to have ideas and things, it's because that the Palestinians want to go to the Security Council or to go uh, to the General Assembly. Uh, I want to see the same momentum after all this show finish. Is there will be momentum or the momentum will change and business as usual. That's what I'm worried about. Right. There won't, there won't be that progress. Yeah. There, there won't be that change. I, I, I hope I am it's wrong. It's a time for change, you really are saying. It is a time for change. And I think if I am an Israeli, it's time for me to ratify my country, not through United Nations, only through my neighbors. There is 300 million Arabs. There is one point something, 1.3 billion Muslims. The Israeli have to have a normal relation to live. They have to live with us. We have to live with them. That's my opinion. We have to live together. And to live together, that means we should not be clever in each other. We have to give the right for the Palestinian, their right. And what is needed, you were saying, really, is a, a, a stronger leadership on both sides, in exactly. a way. Exactly. Both sides. Exactly. And the United States have to watch with the quartet to have them in a place to go over all these issues and to try to find solutions. All of us know the solution. We just need somebody to implement it. All of us, we know the solution. Yeah. And the solution would be, in a paragraph, would be? It's been, it's been discussed all the time yeah. between the Israeli and the Palestinian, about the border, about the water, about the refugees, about the settlements. You know, these four issues, security, uh, all these five issues, uh, you know, you can put a committee for each issue and you reach a package deal in, in it. But package deal, not according to what we want or what they want the Israeli. Package deal could go parallel with the Security Council resolutions. And that, and that could be the step. Exactly. And that would be a new era in the Middle East, wouldn't it? That's what I hope. That's what we, we, we in Qatar uh, suffer a lot because we was in the front for the peace and we've been accused a lot. Uh, and this, uh, you know this. So now it's uh, the time that uh, everybody should participate and do something. And you, Qatar, are getting more and more involved in great world issues and so on. For instance, like uh, this week's story that, uh, in fact, the US have agreed that uh, the Taliban should have an office in Qatar for possible negotiations and so on. That's, uh, Something not premature. being, it's not yet yeah, premature, it's not concrete, but we are uh, leading in different um, 
problems or not leading, helping in certain problems uh, to try to find a solution, you know, uh, either in Afghanistan or in, 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 in Palestine. As you know, the chair of the peace committee is Qatar, is, is myself is, is in the peace committee, so we are working hard. This is our policy. This is His Highness the Emir policy, how to help and how to mediate to help. Um, but uh, we can do part of it, but if the other two parties they don't want to do, that's another subject. And in terms of Libya, you decided that that was an urgent issue, a vital issue that must not go wrong. You know, when you see the tanks and the plane killing peoples, and it doesn't differentiate from somebody uh, carrying a gun or uh, somebody playing in the and the kindergarten as a small baby or a, or a wife or a child or an old man or, or a hospital, you cannot sit and not to do anything. And I think uh, what we see in the Middle East, it's not bad. I think it's good. Let the people say what they want. Let the people feel that they are free to choose their leadership. And also, I am happy that the leadership in the region, in all the region, in the Middle East region, now they can listen better to their people. They, can, they, can, they know that they have to do the right things. They have to know that they are, they have to reflect what the people want, not what they want. Uh, That's so a that, major, that, yeah. major change. Yeah, yeah. And that, that means more democracy, really, even in Qatar. Well, we are, we are, as you know, we are working progressively in this, and uh, there is a plan, and we are doing the plan. We are the first country that did a, a referendum in, in, in Qatar, and uh, you know the free press, and you know the headache from the free press. Uh, we have it. You know we have municipality election, and also the parliament. Uh, I'm sure uh, that's not for me to say, but. Uh, uh, you know, there is a plan being done uh, to go forward, to put Qatar in the right, uh, in the right place, uh, and also to fulfill what the people of Qatar uh, want. And in terms of Libya, your, your uh, intervention was, was crucial, wasn't it? Um, how much do you think, by the time it's all over, it will have, it will have cost you? In terms of what? term of money, money, money. Or it's a lot. It costs us a lot. Uh, still, we don't know how, what is the figure, but it costs us a lot. A lot. It's, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. if, you, if you see the capacity of Qatar and how much we invest in that, uh, it's a lot. And there may be other places, of course, in which you'll, you'll have to act. Um, like, for instance, um, Syria, where there doesn't seem to have been really any action. Um, it seems illogical. I feel very sorry. We have very close relation with the Syrians and with the government of Syria. And I felt that this problem is growing and growing more and more. It could be solved uh, easier in the beginning. And we, we said what we said. We advised our uh, brother in Syria, what what could be done, uh, and now um, after all the killing, uh, His Highness said a word in one of his interview in uh, Jazeera Arabic. You know that the people it seems they decide what they want, and for me the best thing is the leadership and the people have an agreement and arrangement for the transformation. That will be cheaper, easier, less bloody. Uh, and, and, and less costly for the country. I wish and I hope the leadership in Syria could arrange the discussion between them and the opposition. We did an initiative, an Arab initiative, and we sent it to them and they know it. That will lead the Arabs to help them also to, to make the right transformation uh, and to uh, do or to, to fulfill the need of the people of Syria and what they need and what they are expecting from their governments. I'm afraid there's still no movement being done. 
I'm afraid that this blood uh, is, is, is not only pain for us, but I'm sure pain for the normal Syrian yes. people. And this amount of, of, of people dead is, is cannot be accepted, cannot be accepted. And I urge them, they have to stop the killing immediately and try to sit in the table and find a way out of this. I urge them as a brother, as a friend, that's, uh, that they can hear me, that they have to stop this killing. And you've obviously met uh, Colonel Gaddafi and President Assad. Are Colonel Gaddafi and President uh, Assad, Bashir Assad, um, are they very similar people to negotiate with or to talk to, or are they very no. different? No, no, they are different. Bashar. Um, uh, you know, he know, he know what his people need. I cannot say Bashar is uh, a not good leader. No. Uh, but I, in the same times, I am not expecting from Bashar, as a normal Arab, uh, to continue this policy. He have to change. I know that he was looking to change in Syria and to help the Syrian people, uh, to, to transform Syria. But sometimes things with the surrounding people, uh, which they have benefits, sometimes they delay things. He, have, he is the leader and he has to take the decision to go forward uh, to what his people uh, need. And I think he has to take the right decision uh, now. Um, in my opinion, uh, the two leaders is different. Um, uh, Bashar younger, more educated. Uh, he know what's going on in the street, and uh, what surprised me uh, that he did not try to contain this problem and to solve it without going for that killing. There was a moment in Syria, wasn't there, when just at the beginning they seemed as though the government or whatever were starting a dialogue, perhaps with the people, but then. Two or three days later, that just faded away and didn't go on. That, that, that was a hope for all of us. Uh, if that happened, uh, I don't think we can see all what we are seeing in, in Syria now. But now, a lot of blood. It seems, as His Highness said, the people of the normal Syrian people decided what they want to do. And for me, it's a pity to see that we have the same end, but we go through a lot of pain. It has to be sorted out in a way which it contain uh, the country, the economy, the culture of the people, and not to have more, more hassle. And on a lighter note, um, the papers have been full of the news that you may be about to buy Manchester United. The That's not true. Not true? That's not true. Oh, if you're going to buy anyone, I'm an Arsenal supporter, so I think you should buy Arsenal. Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm not specialised in, in the clubs, as you know, I'm not uh, fond of football. I know this is not popular, but uh, that's not true. And we announced that a few weeks ago that we, are, we did not negotiate yeah. that. And then there were new headlines this week, and too. But, uh, so, so well, people in Manchester it's United, now, it's the now, Glazers who would be selling it would uh, well, must this have is, got very excited. No, and also, you know, a lot of people talk about Qatar now. They will buy this, they will buy that. This is also make the price good for anything to be sold. So. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then, of course, there's the great coup of getting the World Cup for Qatar. We read about air-conditioned stadiums. There is a lot of development. Uh, the team which they are working, leaded by Mohammed uh, bin Hamad, the son of His Highness, is, is doing good job. They are young, they are talented. They want to show Qatar, they want to show what they can do. And I am very optimistic that they will do something very special. And there were those stories about possible bribery and so on, but as far as you investigated, no doubt, and uh, you're sure that I, there wasn't you, at all you know, that, I am, that there I'm, was. You know, I'm not uh, involved in, in these things. Uh, but I did not hear anything uh, like this. I, uh, I did not hear anything. And if you could uh, put it into words, Your Excellency, right now, uh, how would you summarize what your 
dream is for Qatar that could happen in your lifetime? Well, I, I went, you know, I am working now 30 years. I call myself that I'm in the end of my career. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, no, that's true. And I believe it's the time that the other generation take over while we are strong. That's one thing. Second thing, I would like to see Qatar not only the prosperity for the people, but I would like that every Qatari work and earn good amount of money, but he have to work. That's the first thing. I would like to see our education, our health system to be the best. I would like to see that Qatar have enough income without the oil and gas. So we can say to our people, we remember the pearl time. We remember when the Japanese invented the artificial pearl and when we don't have anything to eat. Now we have to work hard for you not to let you have this because we know that every material could finish. Every material you can find an alter, alternative for it. And for me, personally, as a Qatari, as a normal Qatari, I would like to see my children know that they can live in the same soil and they can be, live in a good life. Do you think, um, looking at the recent past and looking into the future, that the role of the United States and possibly Saudi Arabia is going to lessen in the Middle East? You know, Middle East and especially the GCC countries have a long historical special relation with the United States. We have friendship with the United States, but we have our differences with the United States. And this difference is, uh, unfortunately, uh, it shows that they are uh, wrong in some decision, and we are right. Uh, our aim is our friend in the United States could consult early about any decision in our region. Sometimes they say we consult with our ally, but it's too late to consult. They already <laughs> make their minds. <laughs> I want them to consult with the region before they make their mind. But no doubt we have a very special relation. We'll continue to have this relation as long as mutual respect between the two countries. And as you know, the small countries always very sensitive for the respect. That's very interesting. And uh, thank you very much indeed, Your Excellency, pleasure. for this conversation. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you very you. much. It's my pleasure. Our thanks to the Prime Minister there. In a few moments, we'll be welcoming Sarah Jessica Parker. The woman who became a star, she was made a star by this city in a couple of minutes.